it's July, which means I have six months of self tape auditions under my belt for this year. Like how did, anyway, let's talk about it. I've done 86 self tapes slash direct bookings so far this year. Hi, happy new year. It's January 9th and I'm actually filming my first audition of the year. Have to take current digital's name, location, my new year's resolution, and then my favorite thing to cook. Instead of at the beginning of next year showing you what auditions I did last year, I thought I would bring you along to all of my auditions. I won't necessarily show you every single one of my auditions because this video will probably be hours and hours long, but I'll just bring you along the way and I'll show you the fun ones. The year is starting off so busy with 19 auditions in January. I spent like an hour self-submitting last night and I saw a few different auditions that I wanted to do. So I was thinking about doing this host audition for a job that I found on Casting Networks. This is for an insurance company. It's an insurance commercial. I was able to memorize it earlier so I have just enough time to film this. I might not have enough time to edit and send it over but I'll try. And the reason that I'm going with this color is because I quickly just searched the insurance company and their logo is like blue and white and I think it's red a little bit and the last commercial that they posted on their YouTube channel about five months ago had the woman wearing like a light pink powdery shirt and I didn't have that so I wanted to still give that vibe those like calming colors so I chose this blue backdrop. I usually decide on what to wear for a commercial audition by looking at their past commercials specifically recent ones and I usually find these on YouTube. It also helps me get an idea of the tone they are going for. Are they more silly? Are they more classically happy? Are they more sad like somber like what is going on? Oh my gosh when you have to wear a beanie and a sweater in your house. Today I have three different auditions to film. I have been rehearsing the lines a bit and um, just playing around with it in general. I was going to ask my significant other to be my reader, but I have been on the Actor Trade app. Well, I was on it earlier this week for a couple other auditions and I might DM one of the readers that helped me. There's three auditions. One is a monologue. The other two are like almost two pages each, but there's a lot of stage directions, so it feels almost like not even a page. They're pretty quick, like a minute. I have my outfits that I'm gonna wear. I do wanna go get a vest from downstairs. I have like those uh, construction safety vests, and I was gonna wear it on top of this because the role is for an inspector, a chef that's talking, and that's for the, the monologue that's an internal event. And the film one is also somebody who would wear something like this. I feel like whenever I've seen um, people that are in that type of job, because it's a pest control employee, they usually have like a button up, like a blue, maybe white button up with their logo here. But I need to go find that vest. It's such a mess in here. You know, I organ. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna say I organized this originally. I mean, it's it's semi-organized because like things are together, like camping and Christmas and Halloween and stuff. But look at this. Hmm? I like to organize. I should have already had this in my um, office closet so that I can use it for self tape auditions. Because when else am I really gonna use a safety vest. Here are the rest of the January auditions. I'm not sharing any of the voiceover auditions because, well, we're not allowed to share any of the audio. So just know that I also had some voiceover. Let's take a break from all of those self-tape auditions. Uh, I'm so grateful for them, but a lot is a lot and I do not get paid to audition. I only get paid when I actually book a job. So let's talk about the sponsor of this portion of the video, Real Crafter. They go above and beyond your typical website portfolio. You can easily brand your reels with custom images, colors, and logos. With detailed engagement tracking, it gives you insight on what the decision makers are doing, aka casting directors, filmmakers, whoever you're sharing your link with, and you get to see every download they do, every play, pause, whatever they're doing. And with individual share links, you know exactly who's 
done what? If you're an actor, you know you want to know how much of your acting reel they're actually watching and then you can pivot. You can see what part is getting boring, what you need to edit out. You can see my reel here and I'm about to start making some more for films that I'm producing in order to pitch them to film festivals and grants so I can keep making more films. You can upload your video directly to Real Crafter or of course you can link a Vimeo or a YouTube link and since all of my acting reels are already on YouTube, I just added those. Okay, let's go do more self tapes. I'm getting ready to film another self tape and this is for a commercial, again, non-speaking. It's actually a casino commercial and they're asking us to dress up as different characters. The theme is supposed to be like Clue, you know, like the movie Clue. So I'm gonna be an employee first. For this character, I want her to find a clue of a note with lipstick on it and then a cup with the same lipstick and match the colors. I try to film as many self tapes as I can on the same day. As you can see by the date on the bottom right, I'm already warmed up, I'm set up, so it goes faster for me if I bulk audition as long as I have prepared my auditions well beforehand, memorized, rehearsed, all of that. And this works especially well if they are all commercial and don't have that many actions or lines. I've done up to five in one afternoon. Momentum. That's what I'm feeling right now because I just got a call back for an insurance commercial that I auditioned for last week. And I'm about to send in a self tape for a filmmaker that I met at an event that I moderated in February. And he also does a bunch of filmmaking on him on his own so as i'm uploading them i get a notification from casting networks that i got a call back from this audition that i got from my agency mdt in san francisco and then last week i sent in an audition for a request that i got from backstage and i booked it so i just feel momentum right now also this morning a gaffer that i worked with in summer of 2020 three messaged me and he was like hey i just had an actor fall through and i think you would be perfect for this role i just sent you the script let me know if you want to do it so that's a direct booking because he's seen me work before i read that script accepted it and this film actually already got into a couple of film festivals and screenings <sighs> I am doing a bunch of self tape auditions. I've been producing a couple of different things that are just taking over like my entire days, but I'm now trying to figure out how to balance the different tasks as a producer and as an actor because we are in heavy pre production. I received a self tape audition request from my agency in San Francisco, MDT, um, for Covered California, which I have auditioned for them a bunch of times. And I know the vibes that they're going for, and they need somebody that speaks Mexican Spanish. Spanish, which that's exactly the Spanish I speak. Recientemente me inscribí en Covered California ha ayudado a millones de californianos. While I was already in that mindset of acting, I was like, you know what? I'm going to self-submit. So I logged on to Actors Access Casting Networks and Backstage and I self-submitted to all three places. Today I didn't find anything to audition for right away on casting networks except for the one my agency sent me. The other ones, all of them are surprisingly from backstage. LA Projects from backstage, um, a couple low paying like commercials and then one dramatic and that's, oh, and one in Spanish. I like to put all the things that I need to do on an index card for audition so I don't have to keep going to the laptop. And also, even though I always have my laptop right next to me, I just do bullet points because then the casting call is just like so much happening and I like to do this so when I'm doing the audition I at a glance I and I already remember it from writing it down but at a glance I'm like okay I'm an upset customer for this one and then I get happy and satisfied what I'm gonna do is come upstairs to do my slate and then I'll go and do my other scene wherever I need to do it and I did already set up my tripod for the living room scene and then for the dining room scene I just cleared off some photos here so that this is my background so I'm gonna come into my closet and figure out what I should wear for each thing Ooh, one of the ones I'm doing is a travel and explainer video about traveling and I think a little bit more business casual would be good. This one would be good for the insurance one. So I have three out of the five. For one of those scenes I want to be on the couch sitting and then the other one it's like me talking about how I pray for pizza before bed so I'm going to be wearing my pajamas. For the one where I'm just talking about pizza on my couch I'm going to wear this. So I need one more. The disgruntled customer brought my outfits into my office so that I can just change in here. 
Something I have been playing around with for my self tapes is using my house as a set. So instead of always being in front of my backdrops, which you know I love, I usually do my slates there. And then I can use my environment to get more into character and to also make it more interesting. I think this could be distracting for some people, but I have yet to get any kind of feedback from casting or any of my agents. And ultimately, of course, it goes down to the acting. I personally have more fun when I move around my house. So I'm gonna keep doing it until I no longer think it's a good idea. <laughs> I don't want to bore you with too many details because obviously I've already shown you so much. Let's just take a quick look at my audition tracker. If you don't know about my audition tracker, it's linked in the description of this video. I'm just curious about my booking rate because that's like a thing we talk about as actors to, you know, just... So currently, I have a 22.6% booking rate. Let's see what kind of auditions I got. 28 of the auditions this year have been commercial, uh, 13 voiceover and 15 short films. And everything else is just like a combination of everything else you can think of, web series, all of that stuff. But primarily it's commercial. Oh, and if you don't know me, uh, I've been acting for like 16 or 17 years and I'm based out of the San Francisco Bay Area and LA. And I also have reps in Phoenix. So I work out of all of those places. Let's talk about the casting websites. Mostly it has been casting networks, Second is email. Sometimes they don't use any casting website. They just email it directly to me. Or I have other people that know me that just contact me through email or DM me and ask me for my email. Backstage, then Actors Access. For some reason, I don't have that much luck with Actors Access. Actually, I know why. Because if you haven't heard this already, casting websites that have a portal for representation, like for agents, they will filter who gets to see it. So when they post an audition, they can say, okay, anybody can see it and anybody can enter. Or you know what? We don't want 10,000 submissions. Let's only allow agencies to submit the people that they think are right for this role. So then maybe they'll get like 2,000 and submissions basically it's filtered and that's why i know for a fact that once i get reps in la i will get more stuff from actors access because currently my agency in phoenix does use actors access but my agency in san francisco does not social media and in person i do get a few here and there um that's one of the big reasons why i still have instagram so those are the portals where I'm having to submit the auditions or where my agencies are submitting me. But let's see who is actually pitching me, submitting me for auditions. Most of it is my agency in San Francisco, MDT agency with 46%. Then me self-submitting 39.1%. And I am going onto all of these websites. And for example, for places where I don't have representation right now, like LA, when I go onto these casting websites, I'm self-submitting for LA jobs. And then my agency signature models and talent, as you can see right here, is only 1.1%, but there's a reason. Because it is in Phoenix, I have requested for my threshold to be a bit higher. So basically I asked them, please do not submit me for any kind of job that's under $2,000 because I'm gonna have to take the time to travel to and from Phoenix. And I have to say, even though the signature models and talent has only done 1.1% of my submissions. Uh, I've actually already booked two jobs with them this year. 8% friend recommendations, people that I meet on set or at mixers, film festivals, and then requested by the casting director, which means the casting director actually found me and either asked me directly to submit or asked one of my agencies, hey, we want her specifically to audition for this project. I don't really wanna to talk too much about the jobs that I've booked yet. I'll definitely let you know in December once I do a recap of the entire year. But I can tell you that I've booked two commercial jobs, which were a great paycheck, and then pretty much everything else have been independent feature films, short films, web series. So they've paid very, very little. Typically, indie stuff, depending on their budget, can pay like $50 to $250 a day. This is non-union indie work, and this is my experience. Um, sometimes they even ask actors to volunteer. So here's to, I need to cheers. Here's to a profitable second half of the year. And um, if you're an actor and you wanna know my thoughts on all of these casting websites, I have a whole playlist right here where I talk extensively of a bunch of different casting websites and it's gonna be different depending on your location and your goals and everything. But cheers to 
a successful rest of 2024.